Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at probability trees. Please do download the worksheet from the website. Have a go at each of the questions for yourself. OK, so let's move on then to question number one. And we're asked to complete the probability tree diagram for a biased coin. So when it lands on heads, it's three out of five, which basically means when it lands on heads, it's going to be two out of five and that will be on the first throw. Now, on the second throw, it's going to be exactly the same. So we've got heads and tails. 3 out of 5, 2 out of 5, and then heads and tails, 3 out of 5, 2 out of 5, and that would complete the probability tree diagram. Okay, so that'll get you about two marks. So let's have a look at the actual questions that go alongside this. Okay, so part A is it says, find the probability that the coin lands on heads both times. What we're looking at is basically the probability of heads, heads. So heads, heads is going to be the same as saying 3 out of 5 multiplied by 3 out of 5, which is 9 out of 25. And that would be the answer to part B of the question. Let's move on to part C. And again, we're going to use the probability tree diagram in the same way to kind of work out each of the outcomes. OK, so part C, it says find the probability the coin lands on heads. And this is important at least once. So if we look at our probabilities, we've got heads, heads heads, tails, and tails, heads. And we're interested in those probabilities because it's in those probabilities landed on heads just the once, or at least once. So you've got to be very careful about the wording on some of these questions. OK, so let's have a look at how we work those out. Well, if I just, we've already got the first one, so we know that heads, heads, is going to be 9 out of 25. I do suggest that for a lot of these, you continue to use fractions, although sometimes they do give you them as decimals, which is OK. And there's one or two questions on decimals in this worksheet, but fractions is sometimes easier to deal with. OK, so let's have a look then at heads, tails. OK, so if we look at the actual uh, probability tree diagram, it's going to be heads, and then it's going to be tail. So it's going to be along this particular branch, which is the same as saying three out of five multiplied by two out of five. So that's going to give us six out of 25. And then finally, we've got tails heads, which is this one along here, tails heads. And that's going to be two out of five multiplied by three out of five. That again is going to give us six out of 25. So to find the probabilities, we add all of those up and we get 21 out of 25 and that would be the answer to the first question part c okay hope that's been useful to you let's move on then to the second question in this particular worksheet so the second question in this worksheet is all about then um, eating chocolate which is probably one of my favorite things to do okay so let's have a look at this one it says there are six milk chocolates and four plain chocolates in a box in a box josh takes a random a chocolate from the box and eats it he then takes another chocolate now the important thing with this is that although we're starting with 10 chocolates in the box of which six out of ten and four out of ten are milk and plain because he's eaten a chocolate it then becomes there are nine chocolates in the box. So the way I fill out a probability diagram is to put those nines in. Because if he's eaten milk the first time round, there were six, there's now five, but there are still four plain ones. So that would be five out of nine and four out of nine. Similarly, if he has a plain one the first time round, well, there were four, there's now three. However, there's still six milk chocolates available. So if you just follow that pattern of filling out the second branch of the probability tree diagram, that maybe will help a little bit. OK, so let's move on then to answer the actual word question that goes alongside this, which is to find the probability that Josh eats at least one plain chocolate. OK, so again, like we did in the previous one, we've got to look at each of our probabilities. So the ones I'm going to be interested in are the milk and plain, so it's milk and plain, the plain and milk, 
and then the plain and plain because the question actually is eating at least one, at least one. So therefore, the milk and plain is going to be this multiplication along the branches here, which is going to be equal to 6 over 10 multiplied by 4 over 9, which is going to give us 24 over 9. Similarly, I've got the plain and milk, and that's going to be 4 out of 10 multiplied by 6 over 9, and that equals 24 over 90 again. And then finally, I've got my plain plain. So what I'm doing is I'm following this along the bottom here. Plain plain is going to be 4 out of 10 multiplied by 3 out of 9, and that equals 12 out of 90. When I add all of those up, I get a total probability of 60 out of 90, which equals 2 thirds if I choose to reduce it. And that's the answer to part two. OK, hope it's been useful to you. Let's move on then to question number three. Um, please do, if you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Um, there are other playlists within the channel that you can also look at. And also, if you have a look at some of the work solutions on the actual website as well, it's actually copies of these worksheets. So it should be fairly straightforward. You should be able to go along the video as well. OK, so let's move on then to question number three and this time we've got Carrie has two bags okay in bag A there are uh, white and blue and in bag B there's also white and blue just different quantities however we've been asked this in, this time to show the information on our own probability tree diagram okay so let's have a look at that well I'm going to put white and blue so therefore there's five out of eight white and there are three out of eight blue okay so this is going to be effectively bag A Okay, let's have a look at then bag B. Okay, so bag B, well, again, I've got white and blue and white and blue. Okay, and this is three out of six, three out of six, three out of six, and three out of six. Now, the only reason I've got two sort of little... Um, uh, arrowheads for the second one is because this is a probability tree so therefore it looks at the probabilities in isolation if you have a look on the post there's a bit more of an explanation about that okay so let's look then at answering the actual word problem themselves so the first one is going to be find the probability that both counters will be blue so if we go back to our probability tree the bit that I'm interested in is going to be blue blue along this particular branch there so so uh, blue, blue is going to equal 3 over 8, and that's multiplied by 3 over 6, and that's going to give us 9 over 48, and that will actually reduce to 3 sixteenths. Okay, now, unless it says in its simplest form, you don't really need to reduce the fractions entirely up to you. However, it's just kind of good practice to reduce fractions whenever you're working with them. It just makes the numbers a bit easier. Okay, so let's move on then to part C, which is to find the probability that only one of the counters will be white. So only one. So it's slightly different because we're not including white and white. However, we are including um, blue and white, and then we're also including white and blue. Okay, so let's have a look at how that works out for us. So for this one, I'm gonna have white and blue, which is my first branch along here, white and blue. Okay, so let's have a look at that. That's going to give us a probability of 5 over 8 multiplied by 3 over 6, which is 15 over 48. And then finally, I've also got blue and white, and hopefully you can follow this along on the branch at the very top. It's going to be blue and then white, and that's going to be 3 over 8 multiplied by 3 over 6, and that's going to give me 9 over 48. Now, I do suggest that you leave the denominators as they are when you're working out these calculations, because inevitably, if you're working out these kind of calculations, you're going to need to add fractions, and it's much easier, well... You need to have the same denominator to add the fraction. OK, so I've got 9 plus 15. Well, that's going to give me 24 out of 48. And that's a probability then of one half. And that's the answer to part C. 
Okay, let's move on then to the final question in this particular worksheet. Please do stop the video, have a go at this particular question, and then compare your solutions. Okay, so let's move on to the last one then, and this is all about cricket and football. Okay, so Izan plays cricket on Saturday and football on Sunday. Probability that he wins and so on. Okay, so find the probability that Izan wins both matches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a probability tree diagram and they're going to use that to be able to answer the question okay so the first one is let's look at cricket okay well with cricket he can either win or he can lose okay and that's going to be 0.4 win and 0.6 lose okay and then on the uh, Sunday he plays football okay and again with football he can either win or lose okay however the probability of him winning at football is 0.55 which means losing at football would be 0.45 so 0.45 0.45 okay so let's have a look at then the outcome so we've drawn our diagram and we need to now use this diagram to be able to answer the questions okay so the first one is find the probability that he wins both matches so i'm interested in win win okay so win win is going to equal 0.4 multiplied by 0.55 now um Typically, this would be a non-calculator paper, and I'm sure that you've got your ways of doing it. But if it was me, I would do 55 times 4 and then move the decimal point afterwards. But you might have a slightly different way of calculating this. But there would be generally non-calculator. It's going to give you 0.22. So therefore, the probability is 0.22 for him to win both games and have a very, very good weekend. OK, final question on this worksheet is going to be part B which is to find the probability that Izan wins at least one of his matches. So like we've done before, we need to go back to our outcomes and look at the different outcomes. So the ones I'm interested in will be win-win, which we've already worked out, and then win and lose. So this one and this one, and then lose and win. But I'm not interested in lose, lose, because we're interested in winning at least one of his matches. OK, so win, win. Well, we've already said that would be 0.22. That's fine. And let's look then at win, lose. Well, that's going to be 0.4 times 0.45. Again, you might do your own calculation, but I make it 0.18. And then lose win is going to be 0.6 times 0.55. And that's going to be 0.33. OK, so hopefully that's OK for you and you're able to follow those through. So when I now add those all up together, I should get 0.73. And that would be the probability of him winning at least one of the games during the weekend. And very good good rate. Okay, hope that's been useful to you. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.